I'll give the booth 15 seconds. Okay. <coughs> You're always in the same spot. I like that. I like that. You're up here. Well, distance warm. That's why I sit here. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the fourth session of the uh, Purple Line Coalition T uh, Task Force Advisory Group. I, I, I still lose track of what we call it, but I appreciate everybody's participation in that. My name is Mike Sable. I am the uh, facilitator of, of tonight's uh, session, and I, I just wanted to provide a little bit of context and just remind folks um, who we are and why we're here. This group is uh, an advisory group that's designed to give the city council uh, information on how to make a decision re regarding the purple line. And um, one of the things that I have uh, appreciated is the audience members who participate so fully. Um, we have had presentations from the Metropolitan Council. We've had participation from the No Rush Line Coalition. We've had a robust uh, series of questions. And so for folks who are interested, uh, maplewoodmn.gov uh, purple line page. There is, I think it's about 35 pages of responses to the questions that have been generated over the last uh, six weeks or so. Um, and so the, what I really have appreciated is the quality of the partnership and the listening that has gone on. I think um, everybody has had a chance to express their opinions, ask their questions. I think it's been a really good, robust dialogue. Uh, earlier this evening, we did get a request from Ramsey County to offer their perspective, and so in the spirit of partnership as a, as a key player in this project, um, Commissioner Victoria Reinhardt has asked for about five minutes of time, and we're more than happy to hear because we haven't heard from Ramsey County yet, so I will turn this over to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much for this opportunity, and thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the City Council, members of the Task Force. I am um, going to read a letter into the record um, and after I am done reading that, uh, City Manager Coleman will hand it out to the members up here, and then we have copies for others that would like to um, read it as well. It's dated March 22nd to Mayor Mary Lee Abrams. Dear, Ma Dear Mayor Abrams, Ramsey County has been following the developments within the Purple Line Advisory Committee workshops. We remain committed to a successful Metro Purple Line and recognize that partnerships are key to achieving that success. To that end, we have decided to pursue additional community engagement, route analysis, and collaboration with Maplewood and other project stakeholders for the Purple Line. We have withdrawn our support for the submittal of federal rating documentation in August and will instead focus on the reevaluation of the White Bear Avenue as an alternative route for the Purple Line. The reevaluation of White Bear Avenue at a sufficient level of detail to allow for its comparison with the Ramsey County Rail Alignment will enable project stakeholders to decide on the preferred route prior to the advancing the project further into design. Ramsey County's support for the reevaluation of White Bear Avenue is contingent upon the use of the existing right of way consistent with our All Abilities Transportation Network, which provides, which, excuse me, which prioritizes pedestrians bicycles, and transit before automobiles. This dedicated corridor will result in the conversion of one lane in each direction on White Bear Avenue again to a dedicated bus lane. Ramsey County is more committed to transit than it has ever been. Even, even during times of uncertainty and change, the county knows that the need for reliable, frequent, high-quality transit remains. Future prosperity in Ramsey County, Maplewood, and the entire East Metro will require the presence of Purple Line and other important transit corridors like it to, to ensure access to health care, food, jobs, and vital services. We are excited to move forward with our partners and community to ensure this vision becomes a reality. It is signed by Trista Maris Castillo. She is chair of the Ramsey County Board of Commissioners, Commissioner Ortega, who is chair of the Ramsey County Regional Rail Authority, and myself. And I just want to say, um, I, I will certainly uh, answer any questions that you may have, but I want to say that this is something that um, we've worked really hard on, and the partners that we have at Metro Transit, um, the city of Maplewood, as far as all the input that we've received from here, um, that this is something that we have really um, 
vetted to the extent that we could and really feel very positive about the reception that we've received, especially from Metro Transit and Metropolitan Council. We wouldn't be here with this letter without them. With that. Okay, who asks who calls uh, on people? <laughs> I, I can just no. So as the city manager hands out the letter that was just read, um, I look to the group. Who, who has questions? Yes. <laughs> Uh, first of all, thank you very much for coming here this evening because this is a very important um, project mm -hmm. for our community on many different levels. Uh, the one question I have uh, is that you've indicated who has signed off on this. I'm wondering if the Ramsey County Board uh, of uh, Commissioners, if they've voted on this new direction yet, and if they haven't, what uh, agenda or when is that slated to be voted on? Um, Thank you. I'm not sure how to do this. <laughs> I'll just direct my answer right to you. Um, this is not something that we have to vote on because actually what we're looking at is the route modification. So it doesn't come back to us or to you as a city for the locally preferred alternative until we have it fully analyzed and then make a decision. And that's when it comes to us. So this has been signed off as far as the county's perspective of this and what we are planning to do. Um, as I said, we have talked to the Metropolitan Council, so there's no action that needs to be taken by our county board or the rail authority at this point. Okay. And, and so, uh, so then who are the, um, the people at the county then who are working on this? Actually, it's Metropolitan Council. I see. Yeah, it's no longer Ramsey County's project. But we obviously can provide some direction, and when we spoke to the folks at the Metropolitan Council, Metro Transit, um, they were very receptive and moving forward with this. Clearly, it needs to be evaluated. Um, and that's, this is going to slow the process down, which is fine, to get the right thing done. And so we'll get all of the same analysis that we've had on other routes as we've gone forward and even the ones that we're looking at as far as the endpoint. Okay. So there's going to be thorough analysis of this and evaluation um, and ridership and all kinds of things have to be done again. Okay. Uh, you can stay there. I'll, I'll use this microphone. Oh, okay. Uh, I, Mayor Abrams, you had a question. Yes, I do. Thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner Reinhardt, I want to thank you for this, and I want to thank uh, all of the residents and the business owners that are here. Uh, I think that this is a testament to what public engagement is and what it can result in. I am very encouraged about uh, the White Bear Avenue realignment. Uh, and my question for you is the next steps. Uh, kind of in a timeline, what can we expect? Because you said that this will be a reevaluation. I have a vague idea of what it is as far as the timeline and the beginning and the end, but I, I would really like Mike to. Sure. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. So, Mike Rogers, Transit Project Manager for Ramsey County. And it's a great question. Oh, yeah. Is that better now? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so again, Mike Rogers, Transit Project Manager for Ramsey County. It's a great question about what the timeline is. We don't have an answer for that tonight. We need to sit down staff level with Metro Transit staff at the Purple Line Project Office with our other city staff too to say, okay, what's the reality here? How long is this really going to take? Because we've spent a lot of time analyzing the locally preferred alternative on the Bruce Vento Trail or the Rail Authority Corridor. It's 30% design, it has a lot of work that's been done. If we're really gonna compare these, like the letter says, we have to get Wiper Avenue caught up to that. So it's not something that's gonna happen overnight, but our, our next step is to get the staff together to kind of say, okay, what's the reality here? So then we can let people know what that'll be. But it, it's not gonna be something that happens next month or the month after that. It'll take time. Then as a follow-up to that, um, how will uh, kind of the new timeline and what's happening, how will that be communicated to us so that we can make sure that that information gets out? We've got a Purple Line page on our website, and certainly I know the council will be very interested in that. So how can we expect that you will be communicating with us about this White Bear Avenue realignment? That would be something we would do through the Purple Line Project Office to work through city staff as well as um, just 
we can easily, I'm, I'm making a commitment for the Purple Line Project <laughs> Office staff here, but I'm sure the staff would be happy to come and talk to the City Council and let you know this is the process that we envision going forward and the time frame once we get those details worked out. Mayor, I can add to that if you'd like. Sure. Oops. Uh, so yes, so this will basically become a new alternative that we'll study through the, the project structure that we have. And so we have a quarter management committee that the city has an elected official that is part of that quarter management committee. We have technical committees and then other engagement processes that will now will plug this into that. So as we develop a schedule and the ridership and we'll, we'll use the process that we've used that's been pretty effective at getting information out and then anything else the city would like in terms of updates at council meetings and others, we can bring that in. But what we'll first do is start to build a schedule about when major new information would be available. Um, but the city, through the quarter management committee, will be a, a key a place that will share the updates through that. And the next one is on April 6th. Yes. Uh, so uh, that, that's one uh, immediate next step that uh, we'll have a little bit more information about this alternative starting then. And one just follow-up question too about kind of the next steps. Uh, and when can we expect that there will be engagement? So, because obviously this is a very important issue in our community, when can we expect that there will be engagement with our residents and with our business owners? Uh, I don't know, in the past you've had pop-ups and different kinds of things. When might we look to having those kinds of uh, events? We will, uh, Mayor, uh, we'll actually start engagement tomorrow um, because this is new information, so we will build this. We have places that will announce that this is a new alternative, and then we'll, we have, uh, I don't believe we've had the spring engagement. I'm looking to her, Liz. If we've got, we've got uh, we, a plan for engagement this spring uh, at various pop-ups and throughout the corridor. I don't have the schedule exactly, but we'll add this information to that process and then build more engagement because we're now going to, this, al this alternative, along with the existing alternative, is in new neighborhoods, and so we'll have to design more engagement to places that maybe we haven't reached yet because we were not nearby that. And so we'll build an engagement plan. We'll share that with the city and with all, through our various, we have channels that we have that have been effective for reaching people that people can sign up, and, and we'll work with the city on whatever you feel is most effective to reach your residents. Okay, I really appreciate it, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Commissioner you. Reinhardt. I'm sure that there are some other questions yeah. as well. I just have one question. It might be for you. Um, so is this alternative saying that it's an alternative to the Bruce Ventil Trail completely, or you still have the Bruce Ventil Trail on the, on the, uh, as an alternative? Yeah. I, we believe that this this is another alternative, and we the Bruce Ventral the current alternative, which is yep. through St. Paul and Maplewood, mm -hmm. we do need to maintain that. But we'll now develop a new alternative, and the information could be compared against the information we already have on the existing alternative, so the city can see how this new route compares to the existing one. But we will really now shift our focus to developing this new alternative. Okay. We don't have a lot of information yet we don't have costs we don't have ridership that's what we'll start we'll develop this new alternative existing alternative we can sort of leave as is um, because it's been somewhat designed and we have the ridership so now we'll develop the new alternative but we do from an environmental standpoint we do need to we don't stop that we don't um, that alternative still exists the, the blue it, it has to exist but, but the new alternative is what we'll develop and work on and then you can see how it compares and we'll bring that out to an engagement process. Okay. And, and one more follow-up. Are you just doing Wiper Avenue, or are you also looking at 61? Uh, we, we will be considering the new alternative, which is White Bear, uh, mm -hmm. Maryland to White Bear, and then the existing part of the Purple Line that's in St. Paul uh, okay. will remain uh, the same. Okay. We're not going to look at 61. Okay. That, you know, what this, this alternative mm -hmm. is different than the alternative that was studied before on White Bear Avenue. Whereas the 61 alternative was ruled out in an environmental process, and there isn't a new proposed route on 61 that has been that we've heard even through this process that would have made it a viable alternative. Thank you. And if I could, um, the locally preferred alternative that exists right now and it doesn't go away actually goes all the way up to White Bear Lake. So that's what's in the federal process. 
but we're looking at alternatives because we were no longer going to go to White Bear Lake and trying to figure out how to do that. So this is in that same process. I think that um, as we move forward, and Nick is right, I mean, they, they couldn't do anything until I came here tonight and because I wanted to present it here. This has all happened relatively quickly, but we did, I did mention Highway 61, and because of when we first studied it, it was ruled out from an environmental perspective. White Bear Avenue wasn't ruled, wasn't ruled out for that purpose, but it, this is a different route anyway. So Highway 61 is not going to be part of this. Uh, Chumbery and then uh, Kathy. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my question is now we're looking at the White Bear Avenue as an alternative, um, and we're doing a new study. There's going to be new data. It's kind of a post-pandemic numbers that we're going to be looking at. Will you be looking at also then revisiting the Bruce Ventral Trail, studying that at the same time simultaneously so we can have um, accurate data to compare side by side versus looking at new data with the wiper numbers and then looking at old numbers with the Bruce Ventral Trail? Uh, you know, that's a great question. Um, we haven't fully developed this. But the cost data for the um, Bruce Ventral Trail I don't think would change uh, some of the environmental impacts related. The ridership, we will get new um, recommendations from the federal process. Um, and if, we, if they ask us to change how we model ridership, I think we'd probably update that ridership for the Bruce Vental Trail mm -hmm. alternative also. Um, but we haven't fully flushed out all the things that we'd have to update. And that would, the ridership would probably be the one area that we might need to. Uh, but the cost data and those other impacts, I don't think we'd have to update. Uh, those, but we could compa we want to compare like to like kind of measures. Sure. So, thank you. Uh, Kathy? Kathy? Thank you. Um, based on the number of questions that came up during this process about the available services that could connect to the purple line wherever it ends up, is it possible that when you do this process for evaluating White Bear Avenue? that you actually come up with plans on how some of your existing programs would integrate with White Bear Avenue because that's been one of the big sticking points. Yeah, that's a, would you like me to keep answering questions? This is a great, great question. <laughs> uh, what's interesting about this new alternative is that, you know, there is existing transit on this route. Right. So essentially a portion of this alternative is improving existing transit. And then we, and anytime we build a transit way, we, we reevaluate how systems connect to it. And so we will do that on this alternative also. Um, and then the ideas that have been brought up, like microtransit, you know, that works best when it connects to a transit way. So mm -hmm. I think that'll be um, you know, considered not just around in Purple Line, but we're considering that on other transit ways too. And so I think that's a good advice. But we'll, we'll, re, we'll definitely, this new route uh, alternative, will look at, well, what connects to it? What could be improved to improve those connections too? Uh, both transit and tra trails and bike and pedestrians, all of those connections are important to make it, to, to evaluate whether it's a good route. Thank you. Other questions from the task force members? Thank you. Uh, I would like to point out also that uh, Met Council member Sue Vento is here in the audience and um, is, I know, very supportive. As I said, we did reach out. We weren't gonna bring something forward that we couldn't deliver on, and so that's how come we reached out to Metro Transit and Met Council. And so, um, really appreciate the comments that this city council has made, being supportive of transit, um, and not on the Bruce Vento Trail, but that you were uh, supportive of transit. That helped us in making this, or moving this proposal forward as well. So, I thank you as well and um, all of the other partners that have contributed to this. And I'm, when, I, when I read here, we are excited. Um, I am excited <laughs> uh, to move forward with this. Thank you. OK. Um, that this. Well, I was just going to suggest that this might change the agenda a little bit because we were going to get into, um, we weren't going to go through and go through each of the responses to the questions because I think 35 pages, uh, everybody had access to them ahead of time and had an opportunity to read them. So um, 
I ask the question this way, given what we just heard, um, general reactions or uh, reflections? I know it's obviously a, a shift in the entire line, so it, it, I give folks an opportunity to sort of weigh in um, any thoughts or reactions or reflections on what we just heard from Ramsey County and their partner at Met, uh, Metro Transit. Amanda. Yeah, thank you. So I had written out what my recommendations are going to be for tonight, and I, I, I appreciate the county doing this because I feel very astute at the moment and did that. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, just through this process, I mean, um, well, one, you know, not being a Maplewood resident, I, I felt a bit uncomfortable, like, imposing my will. But, you know, my observations are... Um, the community clearly loves the Bruce Vento Trail, and it is an important, amenities are important for attracting uh, residents and economic development. At the same time, the chamber and the community, it, it supports transit, and um, it's true that investments in transit infrastructure result in economic development opportunity, especially fixed routes, and are really vital for employees to get uh, to and from work. Um, so my thought was there's really no reason we can't do both. And so I appreciate now that this alternative is on the table, especially since the world has changed so much since this project was first envisioned and all <laughs> my history here. Like I first heard of the Rush Line Corridor uh, when I was a college intern for Congressman Jim Oberstar, and they were <laughs> buying the railroads. So I've like been aware of this project for a long, long time. And so, you know, things have changed, So I, and work patterns have changed with the pandemic. So I appreciate taking a fresh look and, and, and coming up with uh, the project that makes most sense, because transit is needed. Uh, I think it is a very important resource for um, employees and employers alike. And so I really appreciate the county's efforts here. And thank you. Thank you. Uh, other members who want to weigh in with reactions? Mr. Thompson. Go ahead. Microphone. Yeah. On. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, I think this is a, a you know, really good responsive alternative. But what I would do is I would ask the community to, to realize the process that we now enter. Um, we do have the current alternative. We need to maintain that alternative. It, we, you, we can't just, this is an environmental process, a public process, a regional, a regional project. So we need to now work on this alternative and compare it to the existing alternative. And so that the existing trail alternative, we are still going to talk about it. Um, we're still going to show data on it. It's a, we are required to do that, and we will. Um, and we will start a process, and we hope you stay as engaged as you have been here in this process, uh, to shape where stations in the alternative are located, what types of in connections are made to it. Um, and, you know, there'll be a lot of chances for new input that really will shape how we design this new alternative. And so, but it's another alternative. It doesn't it does not, we can't just say this is the alternative. We must go through a, a deliberative process. And, and so we'll do that over the next several months. Um, but, you know, I think it's a good, from a transit, we're upgrading a really good route that's out there now. It's got tremendous potential. It seems like it meets what well, I've heard through this process of a desire for improved transit, but also protecting this great asset in the Vento Trail. It's a win-win in many ways. But we still need the data to show us what will this cost, what kind of ridership will go, will it qualify for federal funding? Very important things that we don't know yet, but we'll, we'll get the answers to that over the next several months and make sure that we're sharing that in the process. But this essentially starts a new process for the Purple Line. But I think, you know, it's a very promising, uh, really, and really appreciate the counties uh, coming forward with this and, and suggesting this through what they've heard and what we've heard too. It really lines up with that. Thank you. Yes. Um, based on the fact that <laughs> we've had lots of input, um, how do I ask this? Do we think that 
or can we revisit um, the one option that kind of dropped off the planet, which was Century College, simply because um, we've heard from them, and uh, we've, we've individually heard from a couple of people who would really benefit from that. And if we're going to do it over, so to speak, is there any chance that we can reconsider that? We got letters of support from um, our health organization, St. John's Hospital, and uh, health partners. But we also got one from the president of Century College. And from the beginning, some of us have thought that was an important piece of this, simply because of the number of people who go to Century College who cannot afford their own transportation. So I'm just wondering if that's still totally off the table or if it's something that could be reconsidered. I can, I can address that too. So I, you know, I believe as we said in some of the statements that was in the packet is that <clears throat> under the Bruce Ventral alignment, I'll call it the current alternative, I'll call it that, um, that wasn't going to be a place of connection of the purple line. But in this new alternative, that might be, um, we'll have to study that option. We, knew, we do know transit connection to Century College is very important. Uh, we've heard that clearly through the engagement. Um, the service that we are providing there today it is not meeting students' demands. Uh, it's partly due to operator shortage right now, but we want better service to Century College and some other destinations in St. John's. Uh, we've heard strongly from Vadness Heights they want connections too. So uh, in this new alternative, we'll have to consider that endpoint. So we're not, you know, I think there's an opportunity there. I just, we can't, I can't predict what the outcome will be at this point, but uh, it'll be considered. Thank you. Yes. I just want to um, thank everybody here on the task force who's given their time and all the efforts and people in the crowd in Ramsey County for showing up and everyone, other a group that has come here, all the citizens who've come here to either express, you know, to get up and voice your opinion or to give it in the survey. Um, you can see what a great, great turnout it is when, when you actually have a voice and whether or not you know your voice gets heard on i mean your voice gets heard but whether or not it gets to be what you want it isn't always you know that's always an option but it, it's it just shows how when you when you come up here and you do it civilly and you know it's a great engagement process and i think this whole thing has been a great engagement process because we've had a lot of people being able to share experiences on the environment um people's love for the for the trail, the environment. Um, you know, I'm so for keeping the Bruce Ventil Trail what it is now and, and you know, taking out all the trees, all that stuff was just so, it's just something that I'm really not for and I haven't been, you know, I'm for parks, open space, trails. It's what, it's what created Maplewood to be what it is now. And to me, that's an artery, that if you severed that artery or changed it, it's the heart of Maplewood. And, it would just destroy too much stuff. So I really appreciate Ramsey County hearing that and understanding that what the people really want and and working together and finding an alternative. And I appreciate, you know, I appreciate all the work that you did behind the scenes. Um, you ask me what I feel, it feels like Christmas in a way. <laughs> the, I mean. And mainly because the snow is still outside and we're in March. But I, I really thank everyone for this engagement and I look forward to working with everybody still in the future. And what's great is we have this task force and we have all this community involvement and it just shows, it, I'm just really happy with everybody that you know we've been able to work together. It just shows, it, it says a lot about Maplewood and I'm very proud to be here. Thank you. wait for the both. Yes, please. Uh, yes, so well, thank you very much. And, and I do have um, a, few, a few comments. And I appreciate, uh, uh, Council Member Cave, your, 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 your feeling it's like Christmas. <laughs> it's always nice to have Christmas twice a year. Uh, anyway, um, uh, before the meeting started, uh, I had provided uh, to Melinda Coleman, the city manager, uh, the recommendations of the No Rush Line Coalition, and I would like to have those also placed into the record uh, alongside of the, the county's uh, comments as well. Uh, because we, we have made four different recommendations, and some of those 
uh, actually dovetail very nicely with the county's um, direction and the Met Council's direction because our first number one recommendation uh, was to encourage that a transit needs study must be conducted to identify transit solutions that fit the city of Maplewood. And so it, it sounds to me that as part of this new direction, this new analysis, uh, it would be an expectation that a transit needs a study uh, such as what we envision in our, uh, our recommendation number one is going to be wrapped into that. So that actually is very consistent with the direction that we've heard tonight. A second recommendation that we make is that we wish that the city of Maplewood would establish a formal transit uh, advisory board, uh, similar like we have a, a planning commission or design review board or the environmental natural resources commission. Let us also have a transit advisory board that is established where the members of that advisory board are actually appointed by the city council and that it be modeled after the other types of boards and commissions and committees that we have here in the city to have people from our community be members on that to uh, give uh, advice and recommendations to the city council on transit. Um, also, we have a recommendation number three, which is I, I think will be of no surprise to anybody. And that recommendation number three is that we are asking the Maplewood City Council to pass a resolution recognizing the Bruce Vanto Trail as one of the top 10 trails in the state of Minnesota, a regional natural amenity, an important habitat for the federally endangered rusty patched bumblebee, and that its existing tree canopy is a cost-saving, indispensable component of Maplewood's infrastructure and system of greenway corridors as set forth in the city's comprehensive plan, and therefore should be permanently protected as a non-vehicular trail. And then recommendation number four, I think is consistent as well with the direction that we've heard here tonight. And, and also with people's concerns, we saw in the, uh, the transportation survey that the city did that the top reason why people say that they really aren't interested in riding the bus is because they're concerned about safety. And so one of our recommendations is that the city of Maplewood partner with our, our police and firefighter paramedics and conduct an anonymous survey to encourage frank and open responses to obtain their input on the issues of safety issues, enforcement issues, and accessibility to respond to calls for service if the Purple Line is constructed on the Bruce Venno Trail versus if it would be constructed on uh, other roadways such as Oh, White Bear Avenue. <laughs> so you see that really dovetailed nicely into what the direction we heard tonight. So uh, we look forward as a coalition uh, to continue to be working on this uh, with the Metropolitan Council and our community and our council as well and anybody else who has a stake in this project. Thank you. Thank you. Um, If we, if we clap the whole night, we will go full two hours. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just, I had to make a joke, I apologize. Uh, is that a paper document that, that you have so we can get that uh, attached and put on the website for tomorrow? Okay. Yeah, thank you. I just you. wanted to make sure. Uh, thank you. Other questions, comments? Chamber, you did your microphone. I, yeah, yeah. Just a quick comment on this whole process itself, and I think community engagement is really important. Uh, what I'm excited about is that this allows for the city of Maplewood and also the partnership with Ramsey County, the Met Council, to do more public engagement. I think there's still more engagement that's still needed. Uh, I think there's still a lot of people in our community that do not know and don't even understand what's going on in their backyard. So um, that's my piece of it is I love getting out there, talking to folks. So what I'm excited about is that we'll be able to reach out to more people to truly understand what the needs and the wants are from our community in terms of public transportation. So that's my piece of it. Thank you. Uh, Kathy and then uh, Mayor. Oh, you sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. informal today, so I apologize. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, 
we've had some emails that indicate to me that people don't totally understand the financial structure of this. And so I, is there some way we can educate people on where the money's coming from for this? It is not coming from the city of Maplewood. Only the fact that we all pay taxes that Metropolitan Council then can spend on projects. But we don't have any say in what happens with the money for this project because we had some suggestions from people, put it toward public safety, put it toward fire, put it, it's like, well, only if we can get them to give us a large gift um, that we could do that with. But as far as taking the money from this project and putting it to anything else in the city, that's beyond our purview. We are not allowed to do that. So I just thought we should clear that up a little bit. Okay. Did you raise a finger to respond? Microphone. Yeah, I can talk. We answered a question about where the funding is, but I think you kind of answered at the end of your statement there. So, but I'm happy to go further if you'd like about how this purple line is funded. But um, it's largely federal dollars. Yeah, correct. it's roughly half half federal, and then the county is the local funder through the sales and use tax and regional rail. Um, and so they, they that what that money can be used on is guided by statute and policy. The federal funding is not. You know, it's very competitive, and so. If it is not spent in this region, it is spent in another region. Uh, our, our region has been very, very good at securing this federal funding for, for example, Gold Line. It's the same way the Gold Line is funded, which is also in Maplewood. There can be local investment that goes along with this that often is done by the communities uh, to enhance connections or other infrastructure tied to it. But that, that's a choice of the city that they can, you can make it up in the future. Mayor. Thank you. From, from my perspective, this feels like Christmas. It feels like New Year's Eve. It feels like my birthday. <laughs> and it feels like the 4th of July. Uh, because, you know, throughout this whole thing, we have been trying to gather information about transit and how we can bring transit to the East Metro. Because I think the one thing that everyone in this room pr can probably agree on is that we have a deficit of transit. And so we need to figure that out. And I really am encouraged by the White Bear realignment, which always, in my mind, seemed like a lot of common sense, because that's where most of the businesses are. That's where the grocery stores are. That's where the, I mean, you can get connectors, you know, going all over. Uh, Century College, I'm concerned about them as well because I know we need to, to kind of include them in this uh, and, and the hospital and the mall area. Uh, but I see this as all four big holidays uh, rolled up into one. Uh, and I really am encouraged. I think what, what this tells me is that we are still in process, uh, which is always a good place to be because that's when we can really have these robust discussions about what we value here. Uh, I concur with uh, Council Member Cave, uh, and I think Council Member Juniman said it too, that uh, our, our parks, our trails, the Vento Trail, they are very important assets in our community. They really add to the quality of our life here. And so in, in conducting this process, uh, collecting all of this information, I think it goes a long way to getting us the transit that we need in the way that it's going to make the most sense. And uh, I think this white bear realignment, I know that you know from my notes from, from previous uh, engagement meetings, I know, and in fact, I saw one of the gentlemen here who talked about a loop going uh, white bear and then over to 61. Uh, I do recall hearing about 61 that that was not ever included in the mix because it's a state highway and it's a little bit different. Uh, I don't know why it was different, but you know, I, so White Bear is, has been part of the discussion. And I know in reading all of the, every single word uh, of every single survey response, email, uh, phone call, uh, any kind of communication that I've had, uh, uh, you know, people were, were all interested in transit 
and wanting to figure this out. And so my commitment to all of you is that we will figure this out. Uh, we have a, a new process, and I think uh, it's always important uh, to have a little bit of patience because now we know that Metro Transit and the county is going to have to put together uh, a whole process, and I will commit to communication with our residents and our businesses, and also I'm going to ask for Ramsey County and for the Met Council to commit to communication with the Maplewood City Council because we all do better when we are talking with each other and communicating openly. Uh, and, and I think that having more of these engagement processes is going to be important. And the process is going to be a little bit elongated, a little bit different, but you know what? We're gonna get there. We're going to get to the right decision. And I am committed to figuring out what that is going to look like. Uh, you know, we don't, uh, I think Amanda said it, that we're kind of, this is a different direction here that we're going tonight. And I think what we were planning or what we were thinking was our agenda isn't the agenda. So in my life, I call that plan B. We need to go to plan B now. And, you know, it, it, we really, we have to, I think, wait for communication from Ramsey County and from Met Council about what the next steps are. Uh, we can make sure that what we, when we do hear something, it will be put up onto our website. We have a communication director who is a crackerjack at that kind of thing, and he will get that up there so that you can see what's happening. And please, please, I'm going to encourage people to continue to pay attention, get involved, because this works, this makes a difference. And I have to say that on my time in the council and my time as mayor, public engagement has been very critical to our community. We do it and we do it very well. And one of the reasons we do it so well is because of our staff. We do it because we have a fabulous uh, city manager, we've got great staff, and they know how to engage. Uh, we have done it with the North End Study, we've done it with the Ponds Golf Course, uh, and now we have gone through an engagement process with the Purple Line. And I'm very pleased, and when I leave here tonight, I'm gonna to be thinking that four holidays right now with this announcement by <laughs> Ramsey County. So I wanna thank the county, I wanna thank Metro Council, or Met the Met Council, uh, for working with us to ensure that we get transit and we get it in a way that makes sense in our community and that we are all a part of it. Uh, sometimes engagement processes can be very, very messy. Uh, and, uh, you know, sometimes uh, uh, you, you have to pivot and figure things out. But I think that we have gotten to a point that I find myself being very encouraged about tonight. And so we will wait for the Met Council and for Ramsey County to give us some guidance on what the next steps are and kind of flesh things out. And we will be communicating with everyone. So please check on the city website because we've got the Purple Line page. We'll also, I'm sure, be putting in information into the Maplewood Living. Uh, and we will keep uh, everyone apprised of what's going on. And please continue to share in our local democracy because this is what really matters. And uh, I just, I commend all of you for the time and the effort. And I think, I feel very encouraged that we are on the right track. And I think the white bear alignment is something that, uh, it just, it seems to make so much sense. So I wanna thank everyone. I don't know, Mr. Sable, if you have any other closing words, but. I, I will just say for my, Vantage point, I have seen two more fingers. So, Mr. Thompson and Mr. Uniman. Well, I just want to put a plug in for the Purple Line engagement where you can subscribe, and uh, we will provide that context so you get real-time information, a great source in addition to the city about where any new engagement event, any public meeting that is just from the project, we'll put that. But that's, I would encourage you, that's a great source where we'll be adding updates all the time with the snow alternative. So I, I'll plug that on behalf of Metro Transit in addition to the city's ways to reach out, so. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, first of all, I don't, I'll go for three holidays, but I'm not doing two birthdays in a year. <laughs> not, not when it gets to be my age. Uh, um, 
did I hear correctly that the St. Paul alignment then is still going to be on the trail? Is that correct? Correct. What, what changes in this alternative is uh, it'll leave the Finland co corridor and go on to Maryland and then to White Bear. All right. Thanks. Just verifying. Thank you. And that's that community itself? Yeah, so the, uh, the portion in St. Paul, let's talk about the portion in St. Paul, which ends in downtown. Uh, it follows the Phelan Boulevard corridor uh, on either the shoulder, and then there's a portion of it, like near Arcade, up towards Maryland that there's a new alignment that's adjacent to the roadway. And then the trail is in that corridor also. Uh, the trail will remain, there's, the trail is gonna be, but it's this, the alignment, if you were to look at the current alignment today, the portion that is in St. Paul remains the same as it has been the, um, until you get to Maryland Avenue and then to White Bear Avenue. So that's what we'll be developing new this time. And I suspect you'll be drawing new maps Yes. <laughs> yes, we have no visuals yet. Yeah, okay. Um, well, I, I, I didn't know what the recommendations were going to be coming in, so it was always going to be a fluid piece, but it looks like there is a, a new direction. Uh, Metro Transit and Ramsey County will be doing some robust work on analysis and data and map drawing and engagement. And so uh, the, what, I guess the question I have for you, does, does that take... Two months or two years or 10 years, is there a approximate time frame? This full year will be used for development of the alternative and data. And, you know, we so have not done any engineering work on this new portion. We have no, we have just, we, you know, we have, we, we just started the engagement tonight, essentially. Sure. Uh, okay, so, so you have uh, at least a year of work ahead of you. Yeah, I don't want to give it, to, there's a lot of work to ahead. Okay. So I, let's not commit dates so we can plan a schedule. Okay. And but it's not going to be in a month. No. Okay. But they will commit it, yes. to telling us Absolutely. what that timeline looks like. Okay, that'll be a long time. Thank you. Okay, okay. I, that, I, that was helpful for me, and, I, and just from yep. a time frame, it's not it's not going to be an immediate thing. It's going to be a longer thing, and so all of you folks get to pay more attention for the next year plus uh, time frame. Yeah, we have been for five months. <laughs> yes, it's just, we'll keep on keep on, keep on watching. Um, so if I, I guess I don't I don't know how to end this appropriately. Yeah, go ahead. Question: does, So, does the committee um, have a unified recommendation, or do, will they get an opportunity to have like a unified recommendation or a number of recommendations, or does every member just have the opportunity to give their recommendation? Huh? Well, I think how we originally thought it was going to happen was that there would be individual recommendations, and then we try to achieve some consensus, and then the Ramsey County and Metro Transit sort of change the ball game by saying there's a new alternative that's going to be studied. So I would love to hear your sort of thoughts. Well, I guess, I guess what uh, my thoughts are is since uh, the project, we're still all going to have to be paying attention. Um, if the committee wanted to, could we keep the committee um, open? It doesn't mean they have to keep, we're not going to keep meeting every month like this or week or however often we've been doing this. It's been so many I can't keep track. Um, but uh, could they still be a committee and make a recommendation when there's more information? I think I'm just, I guess I, can I weigh in on that? I think yes, that please. that's something that we have to kind of wait and see. It's something we will discuss at the council level. But right now with this new white bear realignment, we're basically going back to engineering studies, new maps, public engagement, and, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're going back and starting, I guess, at ground zero uh, and looking at this differently. So I think we need to kind of wait and see what the timeline looks like. And I think we need to give uh, the Met Council and Ramsey County time to flesh that out. Uh, and certainly public engagement is critical. I mean, we do it and we, I think we do it very well. But to, uh, I think we need to get more information before we make any decisions about that. And Councilmember Villavicencio, you are our representative on the, the um, CMC. Yes, that's right. Oh uh, no, I meant the co this committee. Right, I understand. Okay. But uh, if if we're not, we don't know what's going to happen and what the timeline looks like yet. We need to get more information. So I think my suggestion is is that we talk about that at a council level. Once we get a little bit more information, this is all new. 
And so this is a pivot point, and I think we all need to be willing to pivot and give an opportunity to the county and to Metro Transit to get us that information. And then we can figure out what is it that we need because engagement is critical and we will have engagement. But what is that going to look like? I don't know. We need to figure this out first with more information. Yes. Oh, oh she's up again. Um, number one, I don't think I'm with the mayor. I don't think we know where it's going to go yet. And we have to give them time to work this up because they're kind of starting as another alternative from square zero to move it forward to where we can compare, because you can't really compare apples and kumquats. And I, I would hope that since we're so good at engagement, perhaps Met Council and the county would love to mimic us and do some engagement on their own that's just as good as ours. That would be my hope. And <laughs> seriously, I mean, if you're going to be taking over the whole new alignment piece, it should be a little more in your ballpark, I think, to make such things happen. Not that we can't, but everybody needs a turn. The last two things that um, we've gotten an email, actually, while this is going on, and I had them in my notes anyway. Um, while you're doing this, don't forget that there was a lot of concern about the crime, and they wanted people want new data and how is that going to be solved? Mm -hmm. And then your whole thing with a driver shortage, and I know you can't answer that now or you might not be able to answer it in six months, but the point is those two things are still very much on people's minds. And so that has to be carried through with the new alternative. I just want to plant that. Okay. Thank you. We're, we are, uh, if I could plug, we're also hiring drivers. Uh, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> you talk to me afterwards and I'll, I'll, I'll show you how you, it's a great job. So. <laughs> Yes. We comment on um, Councilmember Villasencio's uh, comment there. I think the whole purpose of this um, task force was to get some kind of recommendation from them. And now with the direction of us changing with Ramsey County, um, I think, I mean, unless if the commission, the task force members are okay with it, not moving forward with a formal recommendation tonight, um, I think the piece of it is to count as council members, we want to hear what their interests are and where that lies. So it would defeat the whole purpose of having this task force if we don't have some form of recommendation from them where we are at this point. So if that is that we are to move forward with whatever's happening tonight and to review that, um, then we move forward with that. But we really don't have kind of an end to this process at all if we don't have some purpose to it. So uh, adapting on the fly, I've heard you sort of say a, a formal recommendation could be you support the Metro Transit Ramsey. Did I? Did you just stop? You can cut off. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I'll just use the, I, I, get, I get two. So I, as I, I heard you say, sort of a recommendation could be support the new alternative assessment from Metro Transit in Ramsey County and then um, you think that could be the recommendation of this group is to support the alternative and I'll just say I'll just read uh, the alignment will instead focus on the reevaluation of the wiper Avenue as an alternative route for the purple line something like that correct so that way there's some kind of action from the committee to the council so we understand um, there's a purpose for us having this event Well, as a non-council member serving on the task force, yeah, I would, I, I would support that recommendation that we um, uh, uh, pursue the um, new alignment assessment as proposed by Ramsey County and the Met Council. And just also want to say there's been a lot of thank yous um, uh, thrown around, but I think the city of Maplewood, uh, especially Mayor Abrams, you know, pulling this all together and having this robust discussion is, I mean, you can see like what um, good results can happen when you, when you do that. So you guys deserve a lot of credit as well. <laughs> Thank you. As a, a, mem yeah. a member, I uh, just want to make sure the wording is right. Um, it's uh, just a, from environmental, we got to be protective of a vi environmental process that you, the recommendation is to uh, uh, to uh, support 
looking at this new alternative. It, it's not endorsing the alternative. We can't, we can't do that at that right. stage, but so I just want to make sure that we're doing that. I'm just showing the letter. I think it was focused on the reevaluation of White Bear Avenue as an alternative oh, route. Yes. From the letter. So yeah, that I think we could, we could definitely support that. Or I mean, I can as our Metro Council, because we're, of course, but just wanted to make sure we're not violating an environmental process. Certainly. Excuse me, I gotta lean in on the microphone, it's changed. Uh, is there any reaction or, or conversation about that as an alternative? As the alternative to, uh, as, as the formal recommendation and then as you get information in the coming months and, and that, then you have another opportunity to obviously see this information again? Does that seem appropriate? Um, I, I have, a, I guess a question, it's, not really so much about the the, the wording, but I'm I'm wondering um, who who are the voting members on this advisory committee? Are are all of us voting members, or just the council? Because I don't know that we're we've been appointed by the council, so I'm not sure. I'm going to look to City Manager Coleman to answer that question okay. specifically. I, I can actually answer that. Oh. <laughs> uh, the council members and myself are not permitted to vote. This is not a meeting of the city council, and so we cannot vote. Uh, we were looking for a recommendation from the advisory committee. Right. So tonight the members of the advisory committee are yourself, Ms. Longry, Amanda, and then Nick. Okay. I, I, I wasn't clear on that, sure. so thank you. Thank you. And you're the only one that hasn't weighed in on it. Um, I think I did. I think I spoke and presented our re uh, recommendations and how they aligned with the new direction. There, there, there were four recommendations that were read into the record. Yeah. Okay. So I just want to clarify then with that, does the other task force member then also agree with those other recommendation also, or are we working on one unified recommendation? I'm a little confused on what that is now. Well, there, this is where the process is, is fluid, and so we'll just we'll, we'll kind of work it on the fly. Uh, so the three non-city council member representatives are sort of the voice um, for the for sort of formal recommendation. Um, there's a couple of options to do. One would be to support the new direction and say, all right, we support the focus on the reevaluation of White Bear as an alternative route for the Purple Line. Um, there's also uh, there were requests of the Maplewood City Council to establish an advisory board to pass a resolution naming the Bruce Vento Trail as a regional habitat corridor that should be protected. And then there was the request for Maplewood to do a uh, police firefighter survey related to crime and responses. I, I don't think that the City Council can act on any of those things. That would have to be a separate formal mm -hmm. action. That's so right. I guess the, that's right. I, as I heard your first one, it said to write, encourage a needs study of transit in Maplewood. Could that be just the formal recommendation of this group? It should be your first bullet point. And then the net result is that it does what Ramsey County and the Metro Transit had proposed. Is that? Right. I, and I think that that's very consistent with what I was saying is that uh, the, 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 the recommendation of having a, a transit needs uh, study be conducted um, I think that's consistent with the new direction, uh, which certainly looking at White Bear Avenue as a new uh, alternative to be considered uh, alongside of the current alternative. Um, I, I think that they, they loop in together. I, I think that's part of it. I mean, because I'm assuming that that's part of the research that has to be done is a transit needs study of some kind. Um, uh, otherwise, you know, how would you be able to assess what what's going on? I mean, you talked about the the micro transit as well with the connectors, and 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 Ms. Juniman also uh, indicated that that would be great to 
to look at uh, how that uh, the, the new alternative that's being considered on White Bear Avenue, how that will connect up with other types of transit programs that we have in place or that are being developed, uh, as has been discussed by, by Nick uh, as well, that there are new alternatives being uh, delivered as well. So I think that that's all very consistent. So may I offer one potential solution? Okay. If we could read your bullet point number one and then add the sentence that says focuses on reevaluation of the White Bear Line as an alternative to the Purple Line, could we merge both of those into one formal recommendation, knowing that the other three are Maplewood City Council requests? Yes, that's correct. So could you, if you would, could you read your bullet point number one? And this is for Nick and Amanda to think about and evaluate. Uh, right, and and I it's a couple of paragraphs here. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. No, I'm 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 tracking. Okay, okay. Um, uh, a transit needs study shall be conducted to identify transit solutions that fit the city of Maplewood. The study will include analysis of a combination of transit solutions that use existing infrastructure and would use transit services such as arterial BRT. Metro Mobility, Transit Lake, New Tracks, Local Connectors, uh, Metro Micro Mobility, uh, and other innovative post-COVID transit solutions. And the study uh, 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 we recommend should be conducted by an independent, objective, third-party transit organization that specializes in multimodal transit designs and is uh, an entity that is unaffiliated with the Metropolitan Council. Now that was part of our resolution, but um, I guess you'll have to weigh in on that, Nick, because I don't know what the process is. So that was what we drafted before we heard of this new direction. Um, so that would be what we're talking about. And it does wrap in what Ms. Juneman was talking about as well, so. Yeah, I think it'd be a good time to talk a little bit of process here of what, what will occur in this alternative. This is a, essentially the study of a new corridor that involves Maryland Avenue and White Bear and Phelan Corridor and the existing route. As I read this recommendation, this recommendation one is a study for transit in Maplewood, which is the whole city. Um, and th this could be fine. The city can do this recommendation of what you want for your city throughout the whole city. As an independent, you can hire somebody. But just to be clear to everybody, we're, we'll be studying a new corridor alternative that has the limits of the, that White Bear in Maryland and uh, you know connections around it. But it will not be the whole city of, of Maplewood, mm -hmm. the geography of the city of Maplewood. And we are required to be the lead agency in the development of that alternative. Uh, so so um, how could we modify to uh, incorporate the White Bear Avenue into this instead? Because I see your point in saying that it, th this is broad and all of Maplewood. And so if we're narrowing it down to just being White Bear Avenue and the, looking at this alternative, how could we word it to, uh, to modify it so it matches what your process is? I was going to suggest, at least, you know, from my comfort level, I would suggest that the basis of the recommendation would be to follow the process as laid out in the Ramsey County letter that we just received. Because words do matter in these um, circumstances, mm -hmm. you know, um, in, in terms of what, what, what a transit study means. And, you know, all of these words mean uh, different things to different people and I think this is worded in such a way that uh, will get to the result that everyone needs and, and it is something that's achievable whereas I, I think this loops in a lot of potential extras that uh, uh, like Nick mentioned are potentially outside of um, statute or typical process that I don't know. I, I would be a lot more comfortable just um, uh, adopting the Ramsey County letter as the um, recommendation. Um, okay. 
uh, when I'm looking at this letter though, then it also says, I mean, because if we ad uh, adopt this as our recommendation, it also then says that Ramsey County will be pursuing, pursuing additional community engagement route analysis and uh, collaboration with Maplewood. And I guess I was thinking that the Met Council was doing this process, not the county. I mean, I'm reading the letter and I, I just want to make sure that I understand who's doing the process. I guess I thought it was the Met Council. So or, or, that's a great question. Organizationally, the Met Council is the lead of the Purple Line with Ramsey County. Ramsey County is the local funding partner, Ramsey County staff. So we, it's a, there, it's a multi-agency lead, but you know, we will work, we work very closely with the county on this. Um, and they're supportive of this alternative. You know, the major decision decider as the local funding partner. Um, and so, you know, it's really about a new route is what's being studied, I think is being proposed as an alternative. And um, that does not mean the city can't look at transit across the whole city in a separate process um, and through other, other things that, you know, that the city can adopt that also, but we need to use it as an alternative that can be developed and ridership, and that's just about a corridor that we can compare to the existing local alternative. Yes. So what was your original proposal that you proposed uh, before looking at adding the uh, recommendation of the, the No Rush Line Coalition? As you read it, I just jotted down some notes and, and said that right, the recommendation is to encourage an evaluation of a transit needs study uh, related to the Purple Line Corridor that will focus on the reevaluation of the White Bear Avenue as the alternative route. Right, and, and then we could add on to that perhaps uh, and that this, re that this evaluation would also include additional community engagement, route analysis, and collaboration with Maplewood and other project stakeholders, which yes. is from the county letter. Yes. I wish, I know if we could just repeat both of those things simultaneously, <laughs> I think we'd be there. So I'll take a crack at the recommendation would be to um, encourage a transit needs study in, along the purple line that focuses on reevaluation of the White Bear Avenue as the alternative route for the Purple Line and include robust engagement from Metro Transit, from NC County, and City of Maplewood with key stakeholders. And community engagement. Community, yeah. Yeah, community, additional community engagement. Okay. I'm glad this is being recorded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we can go back and get that wording exactly, but I think um, conceptually, that framework makes sense. Re-study re, okay. re the transit corridor, emphasize White Bear Avenue, and include additional community engagement with the three agencies and community stakeholders. And, and the public. Oh, yeah, that, that uh, I, we we got to make it clear, yep. the public. Okay. Sorry. Nope. Because <laughs> stakeholders is, where is so matter. ambiguous. That could be anybody and nobody at all. Got so <laughs> okay. I'm going to look at Nick and Amanda and say, does that make sense? And do you understand what that recommendation then looks like? Let me uh, say what we'll do and see if, it ma see if it matches people's expectations. So we have a, a current alternative uh, along Bruce Rental Trail to White Bear. We're going to study a new route. We're going to add a new alternative. Um, that goes, connects, as we've stated, through Maryland and White Bear. That's the new alternative that, that will be evaluated. Mm -hmm. And we will follow the same process to evaluate this alternative as we have for the existing alternative. So it's not a, it's how we study an alternative is the mm -hmm. same as we've done. We're not creating a new way to study that or do a value. Right. We want to be consistent. Right. So if that's, you know, if that's what the recommendation sounds like, it, it's, it sounds pretty close, um, but that's what the process dictates that we can do. We can't, we have to follow the process of a new alternative right. that's very similar to that. So, and absolutely engagement. Um, we'll, of course my we will my do question that. was um, instead of the word transit needs study, because that's not the legal language that would work, the Met Council's 
alternative study, whatever that word the words were. Alternative option. A new route alternative. New route alternative. Analysis, so that, maybe. Analysis, or you could they call it a study, I believe. Yeah, I'm sure that'll work. Okay. I'm going to make an effort to summarize it. I've been trying to jot down notes as we go. This is why it's a fluid process. The recommendation is to encourage the Metropolitan Council to perform a new route alternative and analysis, to focus on the reevaluation of White Bear Avenue as an alternative route for the Purple Line, and must include robust public engagement with residents, stakeholders, and key partners such as, no, let me back up. I want to get it right, right? The recommendation is for the Metropolitan Council to do a new route alternative and analysis to focus on White Bear Avenue mm -hmm. as an alternative route for the Purple Line to include robust resident engagement and will include Metropolitan Transit, Met Council, Ramsey County, and City of Maplewood. Yes. All right, there are three members who are left, and, I, and just for folks uh, at home, um, uh, Robert t has tested positive for COVID and couldn't be here today, and Torn was also un unavailable, so it's a, a robust team of three. But We're, we have a quorum. Well, we do have a quorum, so um, I, I, this is, um, I, I just I'll say, uh, for all those in favor of the recommendation as it was written and will be submitted to the online piece, say aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, since there are no other voters, there's no one opposed to it. So uh, I want to say thanks to everybody for letting this uh, process unfold. I think it was a, a good outcome. Um, it's probably more timely than you were thinking. So there's going to be more information and more opportunities to sit in these meetings and participate. But uh, thanks for letting me uh, join this group. And, and I appreciate everybody's support. It is 8-12. Uh, you get uh, 48 7, minutes. 12. I'm sorry, 7-12. 7, 12. <laughs> Uh, you get 48 minutes back. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Mike. I want to say thank you to you, too. Thank you for doing this with us.